Greetings, Black family. This is Dr. Umar Johnson. Welcome back to another exciting week at a Black Parent Teleconference where you get your questions answered about Black child education and mental health. Uh, for the first time, I'm actually going to broadcast the call on Facebook Live, so nothing changes on the telephone. Uh, we will still take the questions as we usually do. I normally start out by asking if anyone has a question, and if someone says they do, I always ask that you state the city from which you are calling from. The city from which you are calling from, you are not required to state your name. I just would like to know, get a sense of uh, where parents are calling from. So as we plan and organize for the National Independent Black Parent Association, I kind of get a sense of where parents are calling from. So that's how we're going to do it. All questions must be related to children. I don't want any political questions. I don't want any other questions. This is all about the children. If you ask a question that's not about children, I'm just going to have to ignore that. Okay? Any other question, you can email me, come to one of the lectures, and that's how you can get that, that question answered. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you who are in Facebook world, uh, I may not get a chance to answer questions that are posted. I may not get a chance to answer questions that are posted. So if you have a question, you are advised to call into the parent conference because those are the questions that I will be focused on. Okay, everyone on the call? Everyone on the call, I need you to mute your phone. I'm already hearing people talking. I'm already hearing background noise. We don't want to go through that this morning. Mute your phone. If you're on the phone, please mute your phone. I don't want to hear no background noise. Okay? So mute your phone. No TVs, no car, no children, none of that. Okay? So please mute your background with background noise. So we'll go ahead and get started. Is there someone with a question to get us started? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Where are you calling from? Good morning. Good morning. Where are you I'm calling from? I'm actually calling from Bluefield. Bluefield, West Virginia. All right. Go right ahead. Well, I have a child with a 504 plan that was implemented last school year, and it's good for one calendar year. Um, when we get back to school this year, I meet with the nurse because I actually work for the board, and she told me that she would get it implemented on the first day of school. I called two days later, and the guidance counselor assured me that it would get started. Okay, two weeks later, I have to go to the school to pick my kid up because she has a doctor's appointment. They rush me into the office and say that the principal needs to conference with me. I get in there, she tells me, that she's been having complaints about him sleeping in class. So I then ask her, have you started the 504 in the day? in order to cut down on the sleeping in class. So she decided at that time that she's only going to give him one nap. Which is in a, I told her, you know, you can't give him one nap because the 504 says two naps. We we're just going to give him one nap. I ended up having to give his doctor to call her to make her give him the second nap because I was getting complaint after complaint after complaint from teachers. Well, then they did, they gave, they're giving him the two naps but they let my kids sleep for two and a half hours. It was third period, fourth period, lunch, and half of fifth period. That was the first time I'm speaking to a teacher at a ball game, and I asked her, do you know that they, did they allow him to sleep two and a half hours one day? She looks at me and says, do you know they allow him to sleep through a fire drill? What are my next steps? What do I do? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm really tired of these people just betraying my child as this, Bad little boy. Okay. He actually has a medical problem. Okay, let me uh let me go ahead and jump in. What is the medical problem if you don't mind me asking? What is it it's related narcolepsy. to? Okay, narcolepsy. Okay. He falls asleep. Got you. Okay. At any time. Okay, here there's a couple things. There's a couple things. What grade is he in? He's in eighth grade. And does he also have an IEP in addition to the five oh four? No, I don't okay. want no no IEP. No IEP, fine. I don't want to win one either. I'm a special needs I got you. Let me answer. I got enough. Let me answer. I got enough information. Let me answer. Okay. A couple things. Number one, your biggest issue is that the... Let me react the question for people in Facebook. The question is about a eighth grade student, or any student for that matter, who has a 504 plan 
and the mother has concerns about how the 504 plan is being implemented. The child who has narcolepsy is being allowed to sleep longer than they should, even sleeping through a fire drill, sleeping for two and a half hours, missing instruction. Okay, so the biggest issue that I'm picking up here is that the 504 plan is not being implemented the way it was designed and it's not being implemented with the best interest of the child. So what you need to do is you need to write a letter to the principal requesting a 504 plan meeting. Remember, parents can request 504 meetings and IEP meetings whenever you damn well please. There's no limit to how often or how often you can request the meeting. So you want to do it in writing. Remember, I always uh, advocate that parents put their requests in writing. If it's not on paper, it never happened. Everything in the school is based on documentation. So put your put your request in writing. I would like to have a 504 plan meeting to discuss my son's 504 plan. I do not agree with the way that it's being implemented. This is not what we agreed to. Remember that 504 is a legal contract between your family and the school district. At that meeting, you're going to bring up these concerns. Okay. Also, if it's not already specified in your son's 504 plan, how long he should be allowed to sleep or when he should be allowed to sleep, then you want to specify that. It might be a matter of specification. Okay. He should only be allowed to sleep 10 minutes or 20 minutes. You need to specify that. Now, I know the concern is why is the school letting my child sleep this long? Common sense dictates they should not be letting your child sleep that long. The fire drill issue, that's safety. That's above and beyond 504. That's above and beyond disability. No child should be sleeping through a fire drill. That's a safety issue. So that right there, the principal could lose their job for that. Okay, especially if the fire department knew or the superintendent knew, okay, or the Department of Health and Safety knew that a child is being allowed to stay in the school building during the fire drill. I can tell you, as a former principal, they do not play with that. Everybody must exit the, the school. They don't care if they're in a wheelchair. They don't care if they, they're uh, ambulatory and have to be transported in a hospital bed. During a fire drill, nobody stays in. Now, not that we want the principal to lose their job, but that will get a principal fired. I know that for a fact. The, the fire department will get them fired. Not saying that you want to take it there, but that's a separate issue involving your child's safety that I do think needs to be highlighted. You might not choose to uh, report that to the fire department this time, but if that happens again, I would have to report that to the fire department because that is a safety issue. Are they saying that they're going to leave your son in the school if a fire starts because he has narcolepsy or that they're going to forget about where he is? I also think that needs to be addressed on the 504. I think you should specify that during fire drills, a certain professional in the school is responsible for escorting your son out. You want a name. You want a name or position of the person who's going to be responsible for escorting your son out of the school in the event of a fire drill. As far as the 504 goes, call the meeting. Tell them what you don't like. Specify. I think you need to specify time. I don't want my son sleeping more than 10 minutes. Never again is he allowed to sleep longer than, than 20 minutes. Specify. Now, let me say this, though. The school may need a medical, may need a letter from your son's uh, doctor that deals with his narcolepsy. And I don't know if he's dealing with a psychologist for the narcolepsy or a pediatrician or whomever. But you might need a letter from the doctor stating that it's okay for the school to wake your son up when he falls asleep because as a principal as a principal if a mother tells me to wake her son up and he has a diagnosed sleeping condition like narcolepsy i'm not going to feel safe doing that unless i have notification from the doctor telling me that it's okay so not to say they're going to act okay then give it then bring it to the meeting then then bring it to the meeting and you'll be fine. That That's not a, you won't have a problem okay. dealing with this situation because he's missing instruction. They're allowing your son to miss instruction because of his disability, which is a violation of the purposes of the 504. The purposes of the 504 is to make sure your son can function. The plan is supposed to support his functionality in school. 
So if he's sleeping through classes, then the school is not adequately and appropriately uh, providing your son with the necessary supports and accommodations so he can receive his education. So your argument is going to be you guys are violating the 504. Not only are you not following it, but the purposes of the 504 is to support my son to make sure he can function in school. By letting him sleep, you're not supporting him. You're not helping him. You are enabling him and his condition. And that's exactly how you want to put it to them. Now, you will need to decide whether you want to put all that in the letter or not. It all depends whether you trust the people you're working with. If you have a good 504 team, I will put it all in the letter and let them know exactly what we're going to be talking about so they can be prepared. But if you have a shysty, low-down, dirty, racist IEP, a 504 team, excuse me, I would not tell them what I want to talk about. I would simply request a meeting and say I want to discuss issues related to my son's 504 plan. Do you have a way for me to contact you personally? Because it's way more to this than uh, that. Sure. Uh, you can right send now. me an email, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com, or you can add me on WhatsApp, 215 uh, So either way you want to do it, for private consultations, I do charge $50, okay? But money ain't an issue, okay? okay? If you don't have it now, you can get it later. I'm not worrying okay. about the money. We got to help the child. So send me the email at uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, D-R-U-M-A-R Johnson at yahoo.com, or you can add me on WhatsApp, 215-989-9858, and we can schedule the private consultation so we can go more in depth about your situation. All right. All right, love. Thank you. Have a good no day. No problem. Keep your head up. We'll get through that. Okay. All right. Um, is there another Thank question you. on the call this morning? Is there another question on the call this morning? Good morning. Okay. I heard two sisters. We'll take one and then the other. So who's going to go first? Let me know where you're calling from. Okay. Where are you calling from, sis? Poughkeepsie, New York. Okay. Poughkeepsie, New York. Go right ahead. Yes, sir. I'm calling. Uh, my, both of my children actually have APs. Um, the district that I'm in is horrible, to say the least. My son, they recently requested to do a reevaluation of him because what they did over the sun summer, they sent out mass letters trying to pull all the kids that were out of district schools that the district is paying for to bring them back to the district. I refused and declined the meeting because his IEP meeting had already been done for a year. And so now what they're trying to do, because I refused and, you know, other children came back to the district and it's horrible because the kids are not getting the services that they need because the district is not equipped to do it. So now they're trying to reevaluate my son. And I'm like, why are you reevaluating him? He just was evaluated last year. His annual IEP was done. So I had... Um, wrote a letter and I said I would speak to you first on Tuesday before I mail it to them to decline the reevaluation. Um, and I was wondering if you can come and do his evaluation rather than the district doing it because you had mentioned it at one of the conferences I went to. Um, because they just, I'm like, you keep doing evaluations, but right now they only want to do it because they're trying to bring all the kids back to district so they can keep the money in district, but it's not benefiting our children because they're not getting their needs met. The, the district is just not equipped to meet the children's needs. Question, question. Your son is at an, yep. is your son at an approved private school? Why is he out of district? Where is um, he? He goes, the school that he goes to, um, it's called After Day School. Right, but... Um, he's been there since kindergarten. He's now in seventh grade. Um, so it's a, so it's a regular, is it, is it the, is it the neighborhood school? No, sir. It's okay. It's in my neighborhood, but it's not the neighborhood school. It's is an it a, organization that's in my county. Okay, is it a public school? He's in a regular public school? No, it's a 
private school. Okay, so he's in a, okay, did the IEP team send him to this private school? Is he at an approved private school that he was sent to by the IEP team? Okay, so the IEP team sent him to the private school. What is your son's disability classification? Um, they had him in the beginning when he was younger. He was he had a speech delay. Now they have him as other health impaired because okay. I wouldn't let them put a classification in. Well, other health impairment is a classification, but he's other health impaired for what disability? In other words, other health impairment speaks to a medical condition or psychological condition. So you can be other health impaired for ADHD. You can be other health, other health impaired for narcolepsy or epilepsy. What is he other health impaired for? What is the health condition? Well, the neurologist says it's ADHD. Okay, so he's other health impaired for ADHD. He's at an approved private school. He's been there since kindergarten, did you say? Yes, sir. Okay, they want to bring him back. Okay, let me tell you what's going on here. Okay, the IEP team determines the placement of a child in special education. For whatever reason, they determine that your son's needs could be best served at an approved private school. He's been there for over seven years. Now, to be honest with you, school districts don't normally pay for special ed kids to be at private schools that long. Normally, they try to bring them back as quickly as possible because they don't like paying the money. It's all about money. So your son been out there for about seven years, and now they want to do the re-eval. And why do you believe they want to bring him back to the district? What did they say that... Uh, leads you to believe they want to bring him back to the district? Well, what happened, what I was saying was the mass letters went out during the summer, right? They took, we had a school that was closed for many years. So basically they had, the school wasn't being utilized. It used to be an elementary school. So what they did this year, all their kids who have behavior problems from middle school and the high school, that's the regular city middle school and high school, they took them out of that school and threw them all in this school. And the parents who agreed to let them come back to district that were in separate private schools outside of the district, they threw all those kids in that school as well. Okay, but I want you to I want you to I want you to answer my question though, love. Why do you feel they want to bring him back to the district? It's about money. <laughs> no, but 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 it's did they money. but did they tell you? Did anybody say to you that we want to bring him back to the district? No. Okay. Let me let me let me tell you why I'm asking you that. Fun. Let me tell you why I'm asking you that. Okay. Federal Special Ed Law, IDEIA 2004, requires that school districts re-evaluate students with disabilities, okay, at least once every three years. At least once every three years on average. So I'm trying to distinguish between whether this is an evaluation to exit your son from the private school or whether this is just a regular a regular biannual or triannual eval. We have to reevaluate students in special ed. So, for example, in Pennsylvania, kids are reevaluated every three years. Okay, in your state, it could be every two, it could be every four. It's normally not longer than three. So we got to figure out whether this is just a regular routine re-eval that is required by law, or if this is a specific eval to exit him. But let me share this with you. Remember, the IEP team determines program and placement, program and placement, Queen. So that means even after your son is evaluated, if you do not agree as the mother, you are a mandated member of the IEP team. The other mandated members are the principal or designee, regular ed teacher and special ed teacher. There's four mandated members, the parent, the principal, the regular ed and the special ed teacher. You have to sign off on a change of placement. Even if the psychologist comes back and says, this child no longer needs a private school placement, we can meet his needs in our school district, you have to agree to that. If you do not agree with agree to that, guess what happens? The child does not move. Now the school district can take you to due process with the state of New York to try to force 
uh, to get the state of New York to force you to exit your child from the private school and send them back. But while the whole due process case is going on and you can potentially prolong that as long as you would like, as, as, as long as the due process is going on, your child stays in that school. So I don't want you to think that getting him evaluated means that forces you to exit your son. No, the evaluation is one thing. The placement is another. And if you as the mother do not sign off on your son being transferred back to the regular school versus the APS approved private school, he will not be going anywhere. So the power is still in your hands. The power is still in your hands. But I do think you need to find out. We do need to find out, is this the routine re-eval or is this a specially requested re-eval? Because if it is a specially requested re-eval, you can refuse it. You can refuse it. Now, let me tell you something else you can do. You can say that you don't trust the school district, that you think they are up to something. And because you don't trust the school district and you think they are up to something, you can request an independent educational evaluation. In other words, I don't trust y'all. I think this is about money. I think the only reason why you want to reevaluate my son is so y'all can bring him back to the district because y'all don't want to pay for his education. So because I don't trust you and I don't trust none of your school psychologists, I'm requesting an independent educational evaluation by a school psychologist of my choice. Once you approve my request for the IEE, I will provide you with the name of the psychologist I have chosen and what you can do queen is you can text me or email me for the phone number to the association of black psychologists so you can get a referral for a certified school psychologist in your state unfortunately i cannot do the evaluation because i'm not certified in new york i'm certified in pennsylvania so i wouldn't be able to do it now they could grant me permission to come across the state and reevaluate your child, but they're not going to do that for Umar Johnson. They may do it for a white psychologist. They're not going to do that for me. So we have to link you up with the Association of Black Psychologists so we can get you a, a black school psychologist out in New York. And there's a lot of them in New York. There's a lot of them in New York City who we can get to do that IEE if you don't trust the district. Okay. All right. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. No problem. Keep me posted right. on what happens. Keep me posted. Will do. All right. Thank now. You. Peace and love. Is there another question on the call? I want that other sister. The other sister. Are you there? Yes. Where are you calling from, yeah, sister? I'm here. I'm calling from South Philly. South Philly. Philadelphia in the house. Go right ahead. Yeah. Um, I have a personal disciplinary issue with my son. He's 13, you know, he's in the eighth grade. He goes to um, performing arts strength there, you know, the internet school. Mm -hmm. the internet. Um, I had an issue with him keep watching these, uh, this bad girls club thing on the internet. Keep watching what? I didn't hear that. Keep watch he keeps watching what on the internet? It says bad girls club. Bad girls, bad girls club. club. What is that? It's, it's a show where girls can fight. Okay, is it pornography? No, it's just a regular like, show. Yeah, but I guess you could. Uh, I don't. I mean, they look half naked to me. Okay, they half naked. They so. Okay, so he's watching a show on the internet, half naked women. He's thirteen in the eighth grade. And he has an account where it goes. Me, yeah, he made an account to where it goes. He's on social media with it, um, and it's like a group of girls or whatever and they're cursing or whatever and all types of stuff. I don't know if it's him playing himself as a girl or him just trying to have sex with two or but I expressed to him that I don't want him to watch it but so sneaky do it. Okay. And what is your concern about it? So you don't want him watching it um, what is your basic concern? He's not listening to you? Are you concerned he has a sex addiction? What is your concern? Yeah, he's not Say again? I don't know. I don't okay. know. His father also doesn't want him looking at it either, but it's like I tell you don't look at it and you still go and you sneak it and you do it. Okay. All right. I, so I don't know. Go right ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know if that's an addiction of him liking to do a fight or 
Well, the bottom line is, is it too much? Is it too much? And you know that as the mother, do you feel your son's viewing of this program is too much? Do you feel it has reached the level of addiction? Yes. Okay. So he has an addiction and it may be a sex addiction. Okay. And I'm not surprised because we live in a society where sex is glamorized, promoted, and used to sell everything from toothpaste to automobiles. Okay. But there's two issues here. There's a discipline issue. He's not listening to his parents. That's the one issue. And then you have another issue where he might need professional help to deal with his sexual challenge. Okay. So, on the sex side, on the sex side, I'm going to give you the name of an agency in Philadelphia that you can contact. They deal exclusively with sexual issues. They only deal with sex, whether it's sex offenders, sex victims, sex addiction, pornography, anything like that. Okay. Do you have a pen? Yes, I have a pen. Okay. The name of the agency is J.J. Peters. J.J. Peters. P-E-T-E-R-S. They're on South Broad Street. I think they're like 200 to 300 South Broad Street, but you can Google them. You can Google them. J.J. Peters Institute. You want to contact the J.J. Peters Institute. You want to tell them you believe your son has a sexual issue with, you know, potential pornography, that type of a thing. And you would like to bring him in for an evaluation. So that's that's the eval side. OK, that's the eval side. If you don't get anywhere with J.J. Peters, then you're going to text me. And I'm going to give you the number to the Association of Black Psychologists so you can get a referral for a therapist who specializes in children with sexual disorders in Philadelphia. So there won't be an issue with that because we have the Association of Black Psychologists where we can find you someone. But first, I want you to go to J.J. Peters because that's all they do. That's all they do. So you're going to start with J.J. Peters. But if we don't get anywhere, then you'll get in contact with me again. Um through my cell, 215-989-9858, and I'll text you the Association of Black Psychologists info, and you can get a referral that way. So that's the sex side. Now, on the discipline side, he's not listening to y'all. You guys are responsible for that. Remember, behavior doesn't stand still. Behavior is always getting better or worse. There's no such thing as he's not listening. What are the consequences? That's the next question. Because if your son isn't doing what he's being asked to do, then there should be consequences that follow. And those consequences should be effective enough to get his attention. Because if he's still doing it, then whatever consequence you're using is not effective. So what are we doing when he messes up? Uh, first, I took the cell phone. So he doesn't have that. I took the iPad. He doesn't have that. The video games. He don't have that. You don't have to TV, so. Okay, but here's the thing. If you took his cell phone and you took his iPad and whatever else you've taken, if the behavior has not changed, those consequences are not enough. Whenever the behavior has not changed, those consequences are not enough. So you and dad got to get together and come up with some better consequences. Let me give you. That's the thing. Him and dad doesn't have a, not to cut you off, but they don't have a good relationship. Is dad in the house? No. Okay, that's so you're single. Okay, you're not a single mom, but you're a single parent in the home. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, that's a piece of it, too, because we need dad to support your discipline plan. You and dad need to come up with, 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 with a program. And if he got issues with his father, then they might need some counseling, too. That could be a part of this, too. Okay, the reason why he's being defiant towards you may be related to the poor relationship he has with his father. So that's another family dynamic that has to be explored. So we got three issues. We got his relationship with his dad. We have potential sex addiction, potential. Okay, and then we have the discipline problem. So you and dad need to come together and come up with the discipline plan. Also, counseling might be necessary for him and his father. And the other thing I want to put on your mind, children his age. Children his age don't really respond when you take things away from them. That's a middle school strategy. That's a middle school strategy. Children his age, when you want to give them a consequence, you want to put them to work. 
So if I have an eighth grade son who's not doing what I'm supposed to do, the phone and the iPad might not be enough. I'm going to have him volunteering at the homeless shelter. I'm going to have him picking up trash in the neighborhood. I'm going to have him volunteering at the a hospital, working at the elderly home, working with one of the community-based organizations, uh, 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 passing out flyers for the uh, community-based organization. That's what you do with them. You have to put them to work. They hate when they don't look cool in the neighborhood. So you got to put him to work. That's what you do with him. Okay, but uh, go ahead. You was about to say something? Uh, yeah, yeah, look at the thing. Um, I like, I don't have him when I try to make him do stuff, but he doesn't. Say that again? He's lazy and when I try to make him do stuff, he doesn't He's do He's lazy and he doesn't do what you want him to do. Same issue, Queen. Same issue. In fact, when you get a chance, go to my Facebook page, Dr. Umar Ifatunde, and scroll down. I did a video a couple days ago on changing behavior without medication. I think you should watch that. Um, you probably also need to get a copy of my book, Psychoacademic Holocaust, so you can read the I behavior. The I, I, I have it. Okay. I have if you it. have it, I need you to read that chapter on behavior again. Because in that chapter, this is what I talk about. He's not listening to you, which means that you're not being respected, which means that the consequences you're using are not working. Now, remember what I say in my book. Mothers, y'all tend to be soft with your sons. Y'all tend to let them get away with murder. Y'all tend to let them run over y'all. And y'all tend to be inconsistent with the discipline. I'm willing to bet that you're not being consistent enough with the discipline. And that's why he's getting away with this. I'm willing to bet. Single mom, black boy, I'm willing to bet that you're not being consistent. And a lot of that may have to do with the fact that you got other children. You got to work. You know, you got a lot on your plate. And of course, you know, I empathize with you on that. But you got to get him under control because you don't want him going to high school doing what he wants to do because that can lead to worse problems. So we need to nip this in the bud right now, ninth grade year, so we don't have to worry about it once he goes to senior high school. Well, he's already in senior high school, but we, we don't want to have to worry about this when he gets to 10th grade next year. So you got to get firm with the consequences. Consistency and consequences that involve him working outside of the home. Consistency and consequences that involve him working outside of the home. You got me on that, love. Uh, I have one more thing. Sure, go ahead. Say that again. Seven fathers, they got into a physical altercation. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Him and his father got into a physical altercation. I know this is family related now. His defiance is family related. A boy fighting his father, that's a big issue. So there definitely has to be counseling. There definitely has to be counseling. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. Because you live in Philadelphia and I live in Philadelphia, I would be willing to meet with your son and his father just to have a, a mediation conversation with the both of them. If you can get the father to agree to that, of course, I won't be back in America until uh, November 1st. I'm in South Africa now on a speaking tour. But once November 1st yeah, rolls around... Time, me and the father... Say that again? Like that, like that, it's okay. It's okay. Well, just find out yeah. if each of them would be willing to meet with Dr. Umar and we'll set up a place and a time to do that. That's what, and you have to make it happen. You can't. You got to. Make, you got to use your feminine energy. No, it's, it's, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it happen because it's, I think that's where the the, the the show comes from as well. Because it's that he we have to do a physical altercation. So he says that he doesn't. He says that he doesn't like the fact that his dad um disrespects and mistreats women. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. So this whole issue seems to be related to the dad. So this is what I want you to do, because we pretty much know what we need to do. You're going to talk to the dad, talk to the son. You're going to get them to agree, and we're going to set it up for November. One of the nights when I come back to Philly, we'll do it on a weekday. We can do it at the home, or we can do it in a neutral place. It don't matter. Do you have my cell number? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, so you're going to text me November 1st. Hopefully you have some good news that they have agreed to meet and it's just a matter of the time and place. Say that, say that again. Okay, no problem. So get to the daddy, get back in touch with me. Yes. Yes, text me on November 1st. Okay. All right? All right. All right, love. Thank you. Is there another question on the call this morning? I do. I yes, ma'am. The first voice that I heard, the sister who said, I do. Where are you calling from, Queen? Atlanta, Georgia. Hot Atlanta, Georgia is in um, the building. Go right ahead. My problem is my son is ODD, Asperger's, and has ADHD. Is what he's been diagnosed with. Um, the homeschool that he was attending put him out. So now he's in what they call a Haven program, which is a school within the school. And okay. recently I've been telling them because he, he was without counseling for a while that when school started, I didn't think it was a good idea to put him back in the general class setting for, the, for a certain amount of period until I could get his behavior together. Well, I have been asking for three weeks. I've even asked in writing, could I have an emergency IEP meeting? They then turned around and did a parent-teacher conference um, instead of granting me an IEP meeting. Um, then, um, on Friday, they he ran out of the building, so they called the police and suspended him. Okay. Stop, so, right Stop, right Stop, right Stop, right Stop right there. 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 I just want to follow you so far. I'm going to let you finish. So your son, what grade is he in? He's in fourth grade. Okay. He's in the fourth grade. He's diagnosed simultaneously with Asperger's, ADHD, ODD. Okay. And you said he ran out the school? Yes, sir. Okay. That's and okay, told, question. Hold on, hold on. I need some more information from you because you said something that I need some clarity. You said he was at a home school. Why is a autistic kid at a home school? Like you said, he he got kicked out the home school. You mean you mean the neighborhood school? What do you mean by home school? Right. Okay. Okay, the neighborhood school. Okay, because I'm about to say, why is an autistic kid being home school? But oh, not that they can't. But I just needed to clarify that. Okay. Fourth grade, he ran out. Now, you said you did not agree to what? You didn't agree to where he is? What did you say you disagreed to? I disagreed with them um, because he's very, very high functioning. Yes. And they want him to go to the general class instead of just being all day in the Haven program. Okay. I was disagreeing with him going out because I knew he couldn't handle it at this moment. So you and wanted him to stay in Haven? You wanted him to stay in the Haven right. program full time with no exposure to the regular ed class. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. The Haven program, are there other autistic kids in there? Or is the Haven program just regular kids? Yes, sir. It's, it's for um, children with autism and behavior disorders. It's okay. The Haven program okay. And so you want him there. And the Haven program is inside of the school. Is that correct? Okay. Because the neighborhood school put him out, and they said that school would be the best. Okay, so him. so so the Haven program and is not in the neighborhood school; it's a separate school, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so you're saying that they took him out of the Haven school program and put him back in the regular school classroom. Right. Okay. How long has he been? in this placement that you do not agree with? Um, since the end of 2014. Okay, so it's been I almost... I complaint with the state last year. Okay, so you're telling and me that he's been... You, okay, you filed a complaint with the state. What happened as a result of the complaint? They said they didn't find the school at fault. 
Um, but once again, he's still running out of the building. He's still, you know, having meltdowns is because he can't handle going from six a six kid classroom to a twenty three classroom. Okay. And he mainly he's mainly getting frustrated because fourth grade is a big jump from third grade and he's asking for help and they won't give him help. They're telling him he can do it on his own. So that increases his level Okay. Okay. Let me tell you. Okay. So you have a placement issue. That's what's going on here. The IEP team deals with program placement and progress. You have a placement. You do not agree with your son's placement. Okay. He's an autistic spectrum disorder student. You feel that he could be best served in the Haven program. The, let me let me finish this. You feel he can best be saved in the Haven served in the Haven program, but the school wants to put him in a regular class. It's not working. He's running out. He's not getting his work done. There's nothing but problems. This is what you need to do. You need to call another IEP meeting. In writing, request it. You want to discuss your son's placement. You are going to object to the placement. I don't want him there. I want him back in the Haven program. If they disagree with your request, ask them for the paperwork so you can sign disagreement. You want proof that you called the meeting to rectify this issue. Okay. And they refuse to accommodate your request, which is to put your son back in the Haven program. Make sure you sign the paperwork. There's a form that you fill out objecting to the placement. Okay. Once you walk out of that IEP meeting with that form, you're going to contact your State Department of Education, okay, special ed office, and you're going to fill out a due process complaint. Now, in Georgia, you guys are pretty modern, so you can probably fill it out on the website. You can go to the State Department of Education website, and it should be a link for Bureau of Special Ed or a link for due process complaints or a link for Office of Dispute Resolution. Okay, you fill out the due process complaint against the school. My son has autism. Okay, Asperger's. I do not agree with the placement. He's been in it for two years. It has not worked. Now, let me ask you this. This is where sometimes African-American parents mess up. Have you been voicing your disagreement with this placement for the past two years in writing? Do you have documentation showing incident after incident, concern after concern about this placement with the school not really responding appropriately? Do you have proof that you've been asking for this change? Yes, sir. I have, I have copies of everything that I've submitted to the state. Every email that I've emailed to the case his um, caseworker, the the director of the GMET unit, and the county special education director. Okay, so it sounds I like sure I have it everything. sounds like it sounds like you have enough documentation. Good. So when you fill out your due process complaint, you'll send all of that in also. Okay, or you'll just hold on to it until you get your hearing. OK, until you get your hearing now, depending on your state special ed regulation, your state, depending on your state, they will either require that your son stays where he is until the hearing has been completed or they will require that the school exit your son immediately until you have the hearing. So we have to check on uh, Georgia state special ed regulation to see if they will uh, force the kid to stay or if he can leave upon your request until the hearing is complete but you have a due process issue and I think you can win it not only do I think you can win it I think you might want to push for an approved private school because you've asked for Haven they didn't give it to you if they don't want you in the Haven program then they should be paying for your son to go to an approved private school I think you'll win this easily because who doesn't know that an autistic kid doesn't really need to be in the regular class if he can't handle it. Now, a lot of autistic kids can handle the regular class. And if they can, they shouldn't be in special ed. Remember, you only go to special ed if you have trouble learning. If the autism isn't affecting his learning, that may be why the school is arguing that he needs the regular class. But you're going to argue that his autism does affect his learning because he can't really be taught while he's in there because he's so overwhelmed by the social stimuli. Okay? 
But when you go to this IEP meeting where you're going to object to the placement and request the paperwork to sign it and then immediately after that, go online and fill out your due process complaint, make sure you take somebody with you. Do not go alone. Make sure well, you take somebody with you. Well, what they did was on, on, Friday, on Friday when they suspended him, they put him back in the Haven program. Okay. You still because need... Okay, once... His behavior was okay. Once again... Once again, that's why you need to have an IEP meeting. Mm -hmm. They are flip-flopping your son back and forth, okay, in a way that is not agreed to on the IEP plan. Because what you're telling me is the way that they're placing your son, flipping him back and forth, is this on the IEP? Oh, that's another issue. No, but that's answer the question. Is it on the IEP? Is it on the IEP right now that he's supposed um, to be back in Haven? No, it's not. Exactly. I, I so they're the breaking the law. Need to it on Friday, but I don't have a copy of it. Okay. Oh. First of all, I want you to slow down and stop stop signing stuff. Stop signing stuff. Take it home. Look at it. Fax it to me. Get somebody to look at it. Stop signing so much because it seems like we're moving too quickly. Slow down and stop signing stuff. But the next step is the IEP meeting. Okay. And you want to bring all this up. Y'all put him back in Haven. How could you put my son back in Haven? You cannot change a special ed child's placement without IEP team consent. You cannot change a special ed child's placement without IEP team consent. You're telling me that they move your son from the regular class back to Haven without an IEP meeting. Am I correct? Correct. That is illegal. Unless it says on the IEP that the school can put him back in Haven if he has a meltdown, okay, that's not necessary. Okay? Now, somebody just said just get an attorney. I don't agree with that. I do not think parents should reach out for attorneys until attorneys become necessary. The good thing about special education is that parents are legally allowed to defend their child on their own. So I do not think you should go and get an attorney, especially when a lot of times the attorneys will set you up with the school district a lot of these attorneys have relationships with the school district sometimes an attorney is necessary but in a case like this you can win this by yourself if you want to get an attorney you can that i'm not objecting to it but in a case like this i believe you can win it yourself i'm just a little bit suspicious about attorneys because sometimes they don't fight for our black parents the way that they should i've seen a lot of black parents get sold out by attorneys where they could have did a better job fighting for themselves right now you don't need an attorney right now you can handle this on your own but what you do need is somebody to go with you to that meeting. So you might just want to get a parent advocate or just somebody you trust. You just need somebody to go who can vouch as a witness to what was discussed. I would also suggest that you take a tape recorder with you. Go to Radio Shack or go to one of the electronic stores. Purchase you a $60 digital voice recorder. Pop your two double A batteries in there. And right before you walk into that room, turn on that recorder and record everything they got to say. Now, you can ask them for permission to record it, okay? And they should give you permission to record it. Okay. But, but, let's say they don't give you permission. Guess what I'm going to still do? I'm going to still hit record, put it in my pocketbook, so I still have a record of everything that was said. You might can't use that in the case, because in most states, you cannot use evidence of tape recording if you didn't have the person's permission to tape. But guess what? You still have documentation of what was said that you can translate into writing. OK, but you need to find somebody to go with you. Uh, our Atlanta, I do believe we have an Atlanta chapter, the Parent Association. We're not going to be launching till January, so we won't have that ready right now. But you can get anyone or you can get an advocate. OK, and the school district can provide you with an I, advocate. I have a question. Go ahead. I have one more question, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I, I think my biggest problem is is how they collect the data as far as his behavior is concerned. Um, they're pretty much like giving him a whole school year in order to, um, I guess, have like two or less incidents. But I get physical reports like three or four times a week. So... I'm I'm trying to figure out if the data, the way they collect the data, needs to be changed. Okay, that's IEP as well. Because remember, what's the third responsibility of the IEP team? Progress, progress monitoring, progress. Okay, so you're dealing with progress monitoring. Like you said, you feel the behavior, the way that they're monitoring the behavior and collecting the data. It might be too weak or it might be too strong. That is a progress issue. So you have two. 
issues that you're going to cover in the IEP meeting. You're going to cover progress and you're going to cover placement. Progress and placement. And if they don't agree with you, take them to due process with the state. Yeah, because I mean, he went from being a straight A student to now having a 2 F. Exactly. So the, and, and that's that's progress. Yeah. So I, I I will thank you very much. I appreciate all your help. No problem. Keep me keep me posted on how it goes. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Is there another question on the call? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Where are you calling from? Houston. Houston, Texas. Go right ahead. Okay, but is he getting in trouble? Like you said, is he getting in trouble? Is he getting into fights? Is he getting suspended? Like what is what is going on in no, the school? No, no, no. He's actually he's um he's not getting in trouble. It's just I know he can. The thing those thoughts or whatever builds up in his head, then he can retaliate physically. That's why I'm trying to at least get information from you or whoever of uh, how I can deal with this. Uh, no, go ahead. When he does retaliate, you know, he gets real angry and he doesn't turn to a big altercation and it's hard to calm him down. And I don't want him to get suspended for that. Okay, well, there's a couple things I'm I'm picking up. Number one, you might need to have, Okay, if it's related to things going on in the school, you might want to request a meeting with the teacher and the principal. That's number one. Number two, if it's not really anything the school is doing, it's just your son and the way he processes incidents, then you might have to get him some counseling. Yeah. It wouldn't hurt to get him some counseling. Okay, remember, you don't need a diagnosis or an eval to get okay. counseling. Okay, he might just need somebody yeah, to work with him. Yeah, okay, right. So what you okay. could do. You could text me and I could give you the phone number, email to the Association of Black Psychologists, and you can see who we have in that area. I mean, you can also use a social worker or licensed professional counselor as well. You know, I'm a school psychologist, so I'm a psychologist, so, you know, that's what we do. So if you want to get a psychologist to talk to them, I could uh, refer you to ABCI, and they'll give you a referral. The other thing, too, though, let me say this, and this is for the good of all the parents on the phone and those watching on Facebook Live. Our sons don't have the option of being explosive in school. They don't have the option of being emotionally uncontrolled. They don't have the option of not having any discipline. So we need to be very, very clear with our sons as it relates to their need to control their behavior. Because when I hear things like, well, you know, he might explode or, you know, he can go off. He do that. He going to get expelled. You know, or, you know, suspended or, or put in a discipline school. So we got to realize these schools don't care about our sons. So we need to do a much better job of teaching them discipline, discipline, strict discipline. We have to teach them how to make it on their own in this world because there's going to come a time where we're not going to be around there to protect them or enable them. So we need to make sure that our sons aren't just thinking, well, you know, this is what I do when I get upset. This is what I do when I get angry. This is what I do when things don't go my way. That's not going to work in a white racist society. 
That is not going to work. Discipline. The ability to do what you don't want to do when it has to be done, whether you like it or not, must be taught at home. If it is not, our sons will be destroyed by white supremacy after they graduate, if they graduate from high school. So I understand he got an issue. We're going to get him some help. But at the same time, we have an obligation to make sure he understands that it is never acceptable to lose your cool in front of white folks. Okay, so uh, text me. Do you have uh, you have my number? Uh, yeah, I have. I have your number. I had a black psychiatrist, uh, uh, psychologist association information as well. And yes, uh, we're very strict on him with his discipline, and that's kind of why he has not exploded. Okay, um, I got but, you. And I'm glad that he's mature and understanding. Yeah, me and his father, we we very strict on you know okay. and his father not together. Good. Oh, I'm uh, glad. I commend you. So I commend you. Uh, I had one more question. If that's okay, I sure. Go ahead. Um, also, uh, I have a not for profit with the after school and tutoring program. And, and a lot of those students uh, have a lot of learning deficiencies. It's not, you know, uh, I don't ADHD. What the ones who have been tested, they say ADHD. Or they say, um, I guess, also, I need, I need the definition of a 504 plan and an IEP. And then also, with these students have defic having deficiencies and they're not properly learning, what can be implemented in a school to help? Well, okay. Well, you, okay, it's a couple things because you mentioned you have a tutoring program. Up, oh, did my call just drop? Let me see something here. I got a call back in. It looked like the call dropped. Yes, I'm sorry about that, family. It kicked me out for a minute. Okay, to answer the sister's question, well, number one, if you have the tutoring, okay. if you have the tutoring program, then I think your tutoring program should target the students with deficiency, so y'all could bring them up. You might want to put them in groups based on skill level, and then have your tutoring assistants work with them in a small group. As far as what the school should be doing. If the child has deficiencies, uh, they get Title One money. They get No Child Left Behind money. They got all kinds of money in that school to help the struggling students. You're going to have to organize with the parents of your struggling students in your tutoring program to force the principal at the school or to meet with the school district itself. OK, maybe the uh, assistant superintendent. OK. Or, or, or whoever is over academic support programming to put some money, either make the school district give you the money to provide the extra support or demand that the school district provide the extra support. But they get extra money to work with the struggling students. Do not, do not request that those children be evaluated just because they're struggling. You don't need special ed because you're struggling. You need special ed if you have a disability. They don't have disabilities. They have deficiencies. They have delays. They simply ain't been taught right. So what needs to happen in a case like that, since they ain't been taught right, is they just need to get extra help. So get this district to do it or have the district pay you to do it. Because I'm sure that I'm sure because you already have a program they can give you a grant or a contract, and I don't really like grants. I prefer contract because that makes it business versus a handout. They should be able to give you a contract to provide for the struggling students in your district. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. No problem, love. No problem. Good luck with that. Uh, yes, yeah, somebody just asked about a private consultation. Um, if you want to schedule a private consultation with Dr. Umar Johnson, that is a $50 donation, which can be made by uh, PayPal or Square. Before I go to the next question, PayPal or Square. My PayPal, uh, I have a PayPal link, so you can text me for it, and I could just text you the link, which is basically paypal.me forward slash Umar the Psychologist, one word, paypal.me slash 
U-M-A-R-T-H-E Psychologist. Or if you want to do it through your PayPal account, Umar the Psychologist at Yahoo.com is my PayPal email. My regular email is Dr. Umar Johnson at Yahoo.com. But my PayPal email is Umar the Psychologist at yahoo.com it's fifty dollars if you have the square cash account square up you can download the app on your cell phone okay you can transfer the money there and as you know it's square it's the dollar sign plus your name so my square cash id is dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson, D-R-U-M-A-R Johnson. So it's $50. And what you need to do is after you make the payment on PayPal or Square, you need to text me or email me to let me know you paid for a consultation. Don't get upset when you don't hear from me if you did not tell me you made the payment. OK, I'm not sitting around looking at my PayPal in my square. I'm busy. I'm organizing. I'm a Pan-Africanist. I got the parent association. I got lectures I got to do. I got people to help. I got a school to build. So I'm not sitting around waiting for you to pay the consultation. You have to tell me, Dr. Umar, I paid it yesterday, two o'clock. My name is so and so. I'm going to check the account, see that you pay it. And I'm going to say, OK, brother, sister, when are you available? OK, I'm free this day, this day, or this day. And yes, I can probably do some consultations even while I'm here in South Africa through WhatsApp. I will just have you download WhatsApp and we'll just call each other on WhatsApp because it's free and we can do the private consultation that way. OK, so let's go back. Is there another question on the call? Good morning, Dr. Umar. How are you? Good morning, Queen. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Maryland. Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Um, I have a son. He's 13. And he was um, diagnosed ADHD quite early, um, around 7. And just recently, he entered middle school um, and was diagnosed again um, after an incident at school. With something I've wait, never wait. Heard of. Uh, a diagnosis with what? What was the second one? DMDD. DMDE. That's uh, not a diagnosis that I know of. That don't. DMDE. You mean EBD? Emotional no, and behavioral no. disturbance? DM. There's no such he thing got, as. He also has emotional disability. He was diagnosed. So he was just recently placed in an emotional disability setting. But DMDD. No, DMDD means a diagnosed mental disorder, but what is the disorder? DMD means diagnosed mental disorder. That's not a diagnosis itself. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Dysregulation with the mood. Okay, okay. So he got emotional and behavioral stuff going on. Okay, but what is, what is your question? Go right ahead. I'm sorry. Um, he was recently placed in an ED program, and I was just stunned when I went to visit the classroom. Um, it's a very small setting, of course. It's um, at a new school for him this year, and um, it's, on a, it's on a hallway with about three or four classes. So he mainly takes all of his classes there in that one hall. Um, but when I went there and I saw some of the behaviors from the children, I was just stunned. Um, I feel like he's been, I think he needs support. I know he needs support. But that setting for him is almost kind of dumbing him down. Of course. Um, of course it's dumbing him down. Special ed is normally dumbed down <laughs> education. So I'm sure they're dumbing your son down because that's what special ed is all about. But go ahead. I just need to know how I can move forward with because um, there's another program that they have inside of the school where he can uh, go to mainstream classes and, and just maybe have a support there with him where he needs it. Okay. So I want to get him into that program and out of the ED program. I just need to know what steps I need to take to move forward with that. Okay, okay. Because First... I'm sure there's going to be opposition. Okay. First off, we made a couple, we may have made some mistakes in this whole process. So we have a student who's diagnosed with ADHD, possibly diagnosed with an emotional and behavioral disturbance, and then diagnosed with some other stuff, adjustment disorders, intermittent explosive disorders. How old is your son right now? Um, he's 13. He's 13. 
Okay, what grade? He's in the seventh grade. He's in the seventh grade. He got all these disorders. I don't really like that, but we can't cry over spilt milk. First off, if, okay, first off, if I would have spoke with you when he was seven years old, I would have not supported your decision to get him evaluated for ADHD at seven years old. Every seven-year-old has ADHD. When you read the criteria for ADHD, it describes nothing more than a, a normal black boy. Loses things, can't sit still, trouble paying attention, blurts out answers, taps with his hands or feet, can't play quietly, acts like he's driven by a motor. These are the criteria for ADHD. Every seven-year-old has ADHD. So I wish I would have spoke to you back then because you don't get black boys diagnosed for ADHD Definitely not that young, but be that as it may, that's water under the bridge. Now, then you say that they put him in an emotional support class. Well, here's my question for you. You cannot be in an emotional support class unless the IEP team decided, and you are a member of the IEP team, decided that he needed to be in an emotional support class. And on top of that, let me say this to you. Technically speaking, technically speaking, if your son is in an emotional support class, he should also have a secondary diagnosis or classification because we don't like to call it diagnosis in a school. In schools, we call them classifications. In the clinics, we call them diagnoses. Let me say that again. In the schools, we call them classifications. In the clinic, we call them diagnoses. He should not be getting emotional support unless he's been formally classified with an emotional disturbance. So, is it true that your son has been classified with an emotional disturbance? Does he have that label too? ED. ED yes. or EBD? He does. Yes, sir. Okay. Been, and um, when when did when did they classify him with an emotional disturbance? Seven years old for ADHD. How old for the emotional disturbance? Um, sixth grade last year. So he just got the emotional and behavioral disturbance. Okay. I'm going to urge you not to let them give your son any more labels. He's only in the seventh grade. He's walking around with some very stigmatizing diagnoses. And emotional disturbance is the most stigmatizing label you can give a black kid. When you see emotional disturbance, that makes you think this kid is like a sociopath or something. So I, I wish we could have had a conversation before that, too, because I would have said don't consent to that because your son still got five, six years left in learning. I don't want him stigmatized by having these labels. He's never going to go to a private school. No private school will ever take your son because they don't have to take kids with disabilities in the first place. And then when they see that label, they're not taking them. Don't get me wrong. I don't support private schools for black boys anyway, unless it's a black private school. I'm just saying he would never get that opportunity, even if it was provided. OK, on top of that, he may have difficulty getting into some of the high achieving schools in your district. When it's time for high school placement, they're going to see emotional support, emotional and uh, emotional and behavioral disturbance. And they're going to not want to be bothered with your son. So that's a label that we don't want on our children. Emotional disturbance. Be that as it may. And another reason why I don't like emotional support, as you've already stated, they're not even teaching your son because he don't have a learning problem. It's behavior. And to be honest with you, you could probably dispute the diagnosis. Excuse me. Not the not the classification. You probably can't dispute the classification but you could probably dispute his need for emotional support because if you tell me your son doesn't have a problem learning he shouldn't be in emotional support special ed is for learning he can only be in an emotional support class if his emotional disturbance affects his ability to learn so let me ask you is your son's emotional problems affecting his ability to learn or is it only affecting his behavior? How is he doing academically in school? Uh, his emotional disability is affecting him. Okay, so it is affecting him. So based on what you're telling me, he does need emotional support because his emotional disturbance is affecting his learning. Okay, so based on what you said, he is appropriately classified and placed. However... 
You have an issue with the program. They're not teaching him. And you have an issue with the placement. You don't really like where he is. Even though the placement is correct, emotional support, you don't agree where they have him at. You want him somewhere else. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So okay. guess what you need to do? Okay. The IEP team. The IEP team determines program placement in progress. The I and you are a member of the IEP team along with the principal, the regular ed teacher that teaches your son, and the special ed teacher that teaches your son. You need to write a letter requesting an IEP meeting to discuss your son's program and placement. And make sure you take somebody with you. Do not go to the IEP meeting alone. And you're going to tell them, I don't agree with the program. My son is not learning. He, Hold on. Somebody's talking. I need you to mute your phone. I don't. Please mute your phone. Okay. Now, you're going to tell them that you disagree with the program. Your son is not learning anything. He's not in special ed for a learning disability. He is not in special ed for a learning disability. He's in special ed for an emotional disturbance. So y'all need to be teaching my son. We need to change. Well, here's the thing. If he's in special ed for emotions only, he really should be getting regular ed instruction while he's in special ed. Or he should be going to the regular ed class for his major subjects. So you know what? You have an issue with how much time your son is spending in the emotional support class. That's a placement conversation you need to have. Okay? Because your son is in emotional support full time. He's in there all day. Correct? Yes, sir. Just okay. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Do you think... He could go to the regular ed class and be successful and not get in trouble or anything for half of the school day. Do you think your son could handle part time emotional support and part time regular education? Or do you think he's got so many issues he really can't even be in the regular class for half the day? What is your opinion? I know that my son can do it. I know that okay. I, I believe your son can do it too. Who are higher achieving? Okay. Then he will follow suit, but he's following suit with what he sees from the right now with children turning chairs. And okay. In other words, he's becoming, he's becoming like the students he's around. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, I, and 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 and. That's another problem, Queen. That's another problem I have with the emotional support program. Because students in emotional support, a lot of them are not really, quote unquote, bad students. But they get in that classroom and get around some very socially maladjusted youth. And they start picking up those behaviors. And then they end up becoming worse than what they were. So you have, clearly you have a program in placement. Pro first of all. You want to reduce the amount of special ed that he's getting. That's what you want to say. When you go in that meeting, my son is in emotional support full time. I want to reduce my son's level of service. I want to reduce my son's level of service from full time emotional support to part time emotional support. I only want my son in that class for 50 percent of the instructional day or 50 percent of the instructional week. I want my son in the regular class for math science, language, and history. I want him in for the regular class. On top of that, sister, does your son have a current functional behavioral assessment and positive behavior plan? Does your son have a functional behavioral assessment and positive behavior plan? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, then guess what? Guess what? When, when you go to the IEP meeting, and you tell them to reduce your son's level of service from full time to part time, you're also going to tell them that we need to revisit the positive behavior plan. We need to revisit the positive behavior plan to make sure it is appropriate for when my son goes into the regular class. What are going to be the consequences if he doesn't have a good day? What are going to be the, uh, the uh, rewards if he has a good week? So make sure you revisit 
the behavior plan because I want to make sure your son is successful and that they don't set him up for failure because guess what they will do they will set your son up for failure if they don't want him back in the regular class they will set him up literally they will put him around kids in a regular class that they know will provoke him. So when you go to this meeting, you want to help determine which class are y'all going to put him in. I don't want him in a regular class with a lot of kids with behavior problems. Put my son in a classroom where the teacher has a good control of the class, where the students are inclined in learning. Don't put my son in an environment where he's not going to be successful. So I think you need to go ahead and request your IEP meeting and, and re request a reduction in service. And if they don't give it to you, tell them that you want to sign refusal. Please give me the paper.